Hey, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can fix the manifold on your 3D models that uh, in a very quick and sort of dirty fashion, but uh, you can still get some really good results out of it. You can, like the, the classic method of fixing manifold issues uh, would be to just go and uh, repurpose the model, edit it, and see what you can do about that. However, with very complicated models, that becomes not very practical. Um, you can either use, I did it in a prior video, how you can fix manifold issues. This one uses Mesh Mixer and is a lot uh, more convenient for, or user friendly, I guess I can say. So this particular model here I got from the a website called Model Resource. It's a fantastic way to get any kind of video game model, really. There's a ton, hundreds of them here. Uh, in this particular case, I got the Iron Boots from Twilight Legend of Zelda Pro Twilight Princess. And uh, I just downloaded it, brought it into Blender, and... Um, I'm just looking at the model now, and uh, this is, I'm not going to give um, detailed instructions on how to use Blender, but just select the model, press tab on your keyboard to go to edit mode, and uh, with the vertex mode selected down here, if you press the control shift alt M, you will, it will automatically select all of the non-manifold vertices in your 3D model. Uh, these are the ones you have to fix or repair to um, have your model actually 3D printable. Now, instead of using Blender to fix this issue, I'm going to instead just directly import this entire thing into Mesh Mixer. So Mesh Mixer is a free program, so that's uh, good to know. Let me just... So as you can see here, the Iron Boots have a lot of problems. Everything's red. All you have to do is go to Edit, go to Make Solid, and this is the, the area you're going to be playing around in mostly in order to fix this model. So this is their way, their initial way of trying to fix the model, and it's completely destroyed. Um, so up here in solid type, instead of fast, go to accurate and just hit update. And once it's done processing, uh, just move the cursor around and you'll see everything. So to get everything back, because obviously a lot of detail has been lost, bring up the, me the mesh density and the mesh accuracy, and then hit update again. And basically you're going to be doing sequential updates like this just until you get the result you would want. The, uh, the mesh you would want to actually 3D print. Mind you, make sure not to bring the mesh density and all that all the way up because that will definitely crash this program. So over here in the offset distance, just click here um, in the, just click in whatever number was there and replace it with like 0 0.01 and then hit update. Okay, cool. So now you can see we're getting a lot uh, better results for this 3D model. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the mesh density and the mesh accuracy a tad bit more. So I'm still getting holes in this model, so I'm just going to bring up the mesh distance to about 0.03 millimeters and see what kind of results that would give me. Um, this should close the, the huge holes I'm seeing in the iron boots. Okay, so for this particular model, it looks like in order to fill up the holes, I'm going to have to bring up the offset distance quite a bit. So instead of 0.1, which is what gave me the, this, uh, the results you see right here, I'm going to go ahead and put in 0.8 and see what that would give me. Uh, that's basically the only property you are going to be dealing with or playing with in order to uh, fill up any obvious holes. If you want a more detailed model, you would play with the other two options, which are the, the thickness and uh, whatever the other one was. Mm -hmm. Oh my fucking god. Okay, so this might be a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to bring that down a little bit. <laughs> Maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Jeez, I did not expect that. Okay, so apparently it really escalates uh, very quickly. So make sure you do it in very small increments. Normally you don't have to go higher than like 0 0.2 uh, millimeters, but for this particular model, it's full of holes. Full of bad vertices, I should say. Okay, and this is about the detail you would come to expect um, using this method to fix the manifold in your 3D models. So you can go, like this is what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to bring this model into Blender and re-add any kind of intricate details that would have been lost from this 3D model. So just go to File, Export. Okay, so this is our 3D model that I just brought into Blender. I'm going to first off go, um, I'm going to fix these holes on top. And to do that, I'm going to just select the model, go to Sculpt Mode, and go over here to the left, select Dynamo, or Dyn Topo for dynamic topology, I guess. Uh, that just basically allows you to add vertices or subtract vertices based on how, how close or far you're zoomed into the 3D model. So in this case, I'm just going to click Smooth, and I want to smooth out this top portion because I don't want whatever this is supposed to be. So I'm just going to smooth it all out. 
until it looks uh, just more like boots, I suppose. So that's decent enough. I'm not trying to make it perfect exactly, just enough to illustrate my uh, point here. So the main tool you're going to be using here to re-add detail is the crease tool. And make sure it's on subtract. You don't want to be uh, creating protrusions. So this portion right there also needs to be smooth. Let me just go back to smooth and just fix that quick. Smooth all that out. That's, um, that's decent enough. Keep in mind that your printer is probably not going to be able to pick up on this minor detail uh, right there. So anything you would add would have to be um, very um, exaggerated, I suppose. So in all honesty, this I don't think I need to add any more detail to this model. I just want to make sure there's no like glaring holes in it. And once you're satisfied with it, you can just go ahead and, I suppose, confirm first off that it's a... Uh, a manifold 3D model. You can just select the model, press edit, go to edit mode. And as you can see, it has a ton of vertices it doesn't need, so I'll deal with that later. So press Control shift alt m and no vertices appear. That's because it's perfectly manifold and perfectly 3D printable. But as I said, it's not. it has way too many vertices. It's a 50 megabyte file, which it does not need to be. So in Blender, you can go to add a modifier, add the decimate modifier, and for the percentage or the ratio, I guess, just type in 0 0.3. And that should, as you can, from the faces here, you can see that number go down dramatically. When you export from Mesh Mixer, it adds a ton of unnecessary vertices, which you can normally fix in Mesh Mixer. In this case, I'm just gonna do it in Blender because why not? So 0 0.1, and that should be perfectly fine. Okay, so I managed to cut it down to about 57,000 vertices. Actually, that, I can do a lot better than that. So let's just do 0.05 and call that complete. Okay, so that seems um, that seems good. So just go ahead and apply the decimate modifier and now you have your finished 3D model that you can export and hopefully 3D print. Just to prove that it actually works, I'm gonna load this up into Simplify 3D. Okay, so the first thing, it's way too big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this to something a bit more, because I don't think I need those boots. I'll just put it around, uh, let's say 50 millimeters. That's perfectly fine and everything looks good here. Let's go and actually slice it up, see how that works. So as you can see, it's a perfectly fit and full 3D model. This is perfect for 3D printing, and that's how you would do this. Very simple steps, you just load it into Mesh Mixer, add the Solidify modifier, play with the settings, export it, and you can re-add the detail that you would have lost using this process. Okay, anyways, thank you for watching this video. Uh, sorry if it's a bit short, any questions, just comment below and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them.